From the death of a best friend to an LGBTQ book based in Nigeria where being gay is illegal and the rewrite of a classic story, these are gonna be the three romance books that I think everyone can enjoy. Romance books get a bad rap and I think there's plenty of amazing books that don't use the usual terrible tropes that romance books use such as like the masculine man that needs to be fixed. I love books that break convention and I think that this list of books will give you some good books to read if you kind of feel the same way that I do about the romance genre. So first we start in Nigeria where a civil war is taking place. The main character of our story starts with tragedy. Her father has been killed in a war and her mother sends her off to live with her grammar school teacher. We are talking about Under the Udala Trees by Shanella Akpur. Okay, I don't know how to pronounce that. I gotta look up another pronunciation. <laughs> While living with the grammar school teacher, Ijama, our main character falls in love with her fellow house girl, Amina. Thus begins Ijama's search inside herself for her sexual identity. Men try to stick their tongues down her throat and she feels disgusted at them. She must navigate through a world that fervently opposes her sexual identity, especially in Nigeria. Through Akparanta's writing, she paints a picture of Nigeria that shows how the struggles and divisions of the country, specifically pertaining to identity, in turn create a volatile society where each side is fighting against each other. And not only are they fighting against each other in an identity crisis, there's also an actual civil war going on. So there's all these layers of different division in Nigeria when this story is written and really even still today. Ijoma feels like she belongs in a certain social circle, like when she finds a gay club with her sort of people, but those experiences don't really last long in a country that kind of bars and opposes her preferences. She's forced to fall in line regardless of her inner feelings. And it makes us consider how privileged we are to be able to approach our sexuality however we want in Western society. And these are the books that I adore, the ones that give me like a new perspective on my own life and show me how others have had to live theirs and how completely different that can be. And this book feels like a truly unique experience because of the setting relationships and societal pressures there there are still a couple of tropes like the more sexually knowledgeable woman who kind of teaches the less knowledgeable woman but you know they don't feel very cliched because of the context of her whole situation and there's a ton of layers like i said earlier and so this book has to simultaneously be a war story, a lesbian story, and also kind of this Romeo and Juliet S story where one Nigerian tribe is not fond of the other and she kind of falls in love with a girl from the different tribe that she's, you know, that she's a part of. And if you aren't aware, it is still illegal even today to be gay in Nigeria. You can go to jail for up to 14 years for being caught in the act. The protagonist's father and the Serpent King was put in jail for possession of child pornography. And, and it's, it's a great young adult romance book that confronts many uncomfortable truths like the one I just talked about. A trio of high schoolers consists of an aspiring songwriter, a fantasy nerd, and a social media blogger who's pretty successful for being in high school. Uh, the songwriter Dill had that father who was arrested and he also happened to be a pastor. You know, that's that's a story that we hear about a lot, a pastor kind of being this sexually abusive and it's a very real reality. And kind of the reason that Serpent is part of it is the church that his father worked for was known for handling snakes and drinking poison and speaking in tongue. And so it was this sort of cultish vibe to the church. Uh, but Dill, the main character, is determined to break free of his associations with his dad. And while the, the trio friend group are navigating the later years of high school, a tragedy occurs which kind of changes the trajectory of their lives. 
and it brings Lydia and Dill closer together, which is where the romance aspect comes in. And, that, and you can notice it's almost like a sidebar in both of these books, the romance aspect of it. There's so many different layers going on, and that's what I think makes a romance book great and also unique from these tropes that kind of constrain it. And, you know, there are a few cliche tropes that are brought into this story. It is, it is young adult fiction, so there's going to be some of that. Um, but again, I think it's the context and the situations that the author puts them through that makes this story unique and worth reading. Uh, tragedy is kind of always timely in our lives. Uh, but I find also that exploring how social media dynamics affect high school relationships and your ego and chasing your dreams. And I think that's a way that this book kind of breaks away from the pack. And we talked about in our last video, Jenna Ortega, and how the young adult genre kind of constrains it. But here, I don't think it really makes a big difference. I mean, the book is still very impactful. Obviously, it's in the context of high school, but that doesn't make it able for a person like me, who's 24 years old, to be able to relate to the context of the book. I definitely cannot relate to the context of the next book because I'm not in... 12th century BC or living in Greece. But that's that doesn't make it a great book to read if you're kind of wanting to delve into the dynamics of a romantic relationship between two very unique people. And you've probably heard about this book a lot. It's thrust into your face as a recommendation. If you know the gist, then you probably already know what book it's gonna be, but it's The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Uh, Miller wrote this book about Patroclus and Achilles' relationship. Patroclus is an underrepresented character in Greek mythology, but arguably he had a very large impact more than any other hero on the outcome of the Trojan War, which is obviously this huge Greek war that had all these encompassing impacts on everything that occurred, uh, which I think is why exploring this relationship is so interesting. But Achilles is one of the famous heroes of all time. And Patrocleus is someone who's basically irrelevant as far as stories go, uh, but the only way that he's known is in his relation to Achilles. And it actually makes a lot of sense that they could have had this passionate gay relationship based on the original myths. And again, I'm trying hard not to spoil here, but if you know the story, then it does really go along with what I'm saying. I love seeing a gay relationship in this context because in the mythical Greek world, passion, pleasure, and excess were all romanticized. So being gay was not quite as looked down upon as say in Under the Udala Trees, but still, you know, there, there's prejudices. Uh, I, I love the Song of Achilles as an unconventional romance because it brings in themes of power, war, sacrifice, into what really could just be a smut book about two men who are enamored with each other in, you know, 13th century BC in Greece. I like gay smut books like Call Me By Your Name as much as the next person, but I feel like that sort of writing is not as accessible or impactful as romance that is in the context of these other layers and other themes. And that's what's kind of been my personal theme uh, throughout recommending these books to you. I want romances that not only focus in on the relationships of two people to each other, but also seeing how their relationships can be melded and shaped based on the context that they're in. And if you haven't noticed, I want to see all sorts of sexualities explored in books. If you want to see my thoughts on Jenna Ortega's exploration of herself in her, in her autobiographical book, click here. Thank you guys for watching this one.